Why did Anoko commence a patent infringement lawsuit against Samsung? Anoko began working with Samsung uh, way back in 2007, incorporating our cadmium-free quantum dots into their TVs. Over the years, we've worked very, very closely with them. Prior to Nanoco, uh, Samsung were planning to launch quantum dot TVs based on toxic cadmium quantum dots. That changed after seeing Nanoco's CAD-free technology. And we really worked very closely to bring our technology onto their TVs. Um, to the point where in 2011, 2012, we worked hard to figure out how we, as a uh, small tech company in the UK, were going to supply the manufactured volumes that Samsung were going to need to successfully launch and to build the successful supply chain. Rather than build the manufacturing ourselves, we decided to partner with Dow who took out a license and built a large manufacturing facility in Chonan, South Korea, right on uh, the border. They actually share a fence with a Samsung facility. Uh, you can imagine our disappointment, Dow's disappointment, when we realized that Samsung chose to manufacture the cadmium-free quantum dots themselves using technology we believe strongly was copied from Nanoco. Can you give me some metrics to help give an idea of the scale of any potential settlement? Probably the easiest metric to give is if you look at the difference between TVs with and without quantum dots. And the easiest comparison is if you take a 65 inch high end Samsung LCD with all the best and bells and whistles. So 4K TV, it sells for about $1,100. If you take that same 65 inch 4K TV uh, with quantum dots branded QLED, um, last time I checked price was about $2,200. So roughly a thousand dollar difference between the price. And we know that the cost to implement the QLED technology is roughly $100 per TV. So, you know, since they launched in April 2015, Samsung has sold approximately 14 million QD enabled TVs with technology we believe is borrowed from the NOCO. Um, 14 million TVs multiplied by $1,000 is roughly 14, you know, it's $14 billion. You take a few billion away from marketing, um, that's many billions of dollars, which uh, you know, is a lot of profit. And Nanoco feels we're entitled to some of that. And why has Nanoco engaged a litigation finance specialist to help with this process? Well, first, it's worth noting that you know, litigation is really expensive. Um, if the case goes through to trial, it can cost greater than $10 million. Um, this was the reason that Nanoco needed to get a specialist litigation finance house in place, as we're not currently in a position to fund this from our own balance sheet. Um, it's taken about a year of intense due diligence from our strategic IP advisor epicenter, uh, the litigators, Mince Levin out of Boston, and the funder to get where we are today. And in essence, the case has gone through uh, a trial, you know, a mock trial where we've really pressure tested the case, all aspects of the case, to give uh, the litigators. Uh, the funders, our advisors, and uh, us confidence to proceed. Um, and we, um, you know, we're, 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 really, we're really excited, we're really confident. Um, you know, there's a lot of money at stake uh, and we need to ensure we get it right. You know, we're really, we're extremely pleased with our partners. Uh, they, um, they're very selective. 
in in the cases they take. How long is the legal process likely to take now? Typically, um, lawsuits getting getting to trial can take up to twenty four months. Yeah, that timeline is determined by the court, which is the Eastern District of, of Texas. Um, you know, it's worth noting that only one in 20 cases uh, go to trial. Most get settled beforehand. So we'll, you know, we'll see. What about the rest of the business, um, particularly the other commercial activities and the cash flow runway? So the litigation funding allows us to focus on supporting the lawsuit without worrying about how to finance it. And that's really important because going forward, um, there's a huge amount of work that needs to be conducted by Nigel and the team, myself and the team, um, to support uh, all aspects of our relation, the previous relationship with Samsung and the technology. So we can now really focus heavily on that um, without worrying about the cash. Um, recent wins in the infrared sensing area with uh, ST Microelectronics uh, and some new display customers are helping extend our organic cash runway. Um, in a number of these cases, we have really good line of sight to scale up activities and ultimate commercial production activities on the basis that our current work is successful. And you know, history shows that we've been really successful with the development of these IR, IR materials. Um, switching to the cash runway, current cash uh, will last through quarter two, 21, so about another, another year. Uh, based on where we sit today with contracts we have in place. We expect as uh, these contracts expand uh, and we move forward, uh, you know, that, that will uh, further extend outward. And going back to commercial contracts, are there any that are significantly well advanced for you to be able to talk about the partners and uh, what you're doing with them? I think the one that's in the public domain um, is ST Microelectronics. And this, you know, this work that we're doing here is largely a continuation of the work we were doing with the uh, large U.S. corporation, which commenced in 2018. Um, so that, that work really never stopped. It continued. And uh, it's going extremely well. We've got... Uh, a number, actually two, uh, two products uh, that we're, we're working on. One is completely done and there's a second one now which is going through development. So um, we're, we're extremely pleased, the partners are pleased. Uh, additionally, in, in the uh, IR business, we're, we're looking to expand that into other customers. So uh, we're, we're, we're very, we're we're excited. Um, it's also worth noting that display, uh, which has been a long time coming, uh, mainly due to the fact that we were hoping to be selling to Samsung. Samsung are the only real major user of quantum dots and TVs. So we believe that we're playing strongly in display, but playing through the lawsuit. Um, but in addition to the lawsuit in Samsung, we've, we've been successful in um, securing some business with others in display, uh, which, we, which, which we believe will, will grow into uh, something significant and meaningful. And uh, I'm sure something that we can talk publicly about to the market in the not too distant future.